Hello, I'm Brandon Thomas, and welcome to a new episode of Anchor Management. On today's Slow News Week, I look at the Lakers and Celtics renewing their rivalry, the career highs all around the NBA recently, and the plenty of significant games coming up in the NBA. But we lead off with the latest on the NFL Collective Bargaining Agreement. Yet last night, the 32 player representatives voted 17 to 14 in favor of the new agreement, which will now go to a full players association vote. The proposed CBA includes a 14-team playoff, which will begin in the 2020 season, a 17-game regular season, which will begin in the 2021 season, along with one less preseason game, among other things in the new agreement, which would last until the end of the 2030 season. Richard Sherman and Aaron Rodgers and plenty of others are heavily opposed to the agreement. I'm going to focus on the 17 games and the 14-team playoff because that, from a fan's perspective, that's our biggest interest in this process. The 17 games doesn't intrigue me at all. I don't believe this is in anyone's best interest except for the owners and the league itself. It's a revenue thing. But part of the agreement has players getting more of a percentage of the revenue, and it could go up even more over time. And the league knows that if the NFL is on our television, we'll watch it. And the 14-team playoffs, I'm against as well. My, re my reasoning for both really comes down to this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's really it. There's nothing wrong with the 16-game schedule and the 12 teams that make the playoffs. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Next up, the NBA's most historic rivalry wrote another chapter on Sunday with the Lakers edging out the Celtics 114-112. The best performance in the game was from Jason Tatum, who tied a career high at 41 points. But LeBron had the last laugh when he hit the dagger over Jalen Brown, with 30 seconds left to give the Lakers the lead, and they never looked back. This was a classic game from the time it tipped, with the legendary Bill Russell coming to the game in a number 24 Kobe Lakers jersey. The game was back and forth the whole time. The Lakers had the advantage in the early portion of the game. The Celtics were in control later on, but the Lakers did just enough to come out on top for what was a big game I mentioned for Jason Tatum who had 27 in the MLK Day matchup against the Lakers and 41 in Sunday's game. Tatum played really good, making moves around the perimeter and shooting at a 60% clip, but like I said, it was LeBron and the best team in the West that made plays down the stretch that helped the Lakers take down their rival. My analysis on this game is simple. The Lakers looked really good at home, regardless of who their opponent is. Jason Tatum is playing extremely well in the absence of Kevin Walker, and both of these teams will have a say in who wins the Larry O'Brien Trophy this year. Before we move on to the next topic last night, LeBron posted 40 on the Pelicans in a big Lakers win to give them their sixth straight. And Jason Tatum posted another big game against the Trailblazers, leading the Celtics to a win, putting up 36. The All-Star Game's biggest snub, Bradley Beal, has been on a scoring streak the last couple games, putting up a career-high 53 points on Sunday in Chicago, only to top that with another career high, 55 on Monday against Milwaukee. The Wizards lost both of these games despite a combined 108 from Beal. I didn't watch either of these games. They weren't on national TV. But what I took from reading the game trends and the box scores is the Wizards played terrible on Sunday and okay against the best team in the league on Monday. But it was Beal that was outstanding in both games. In reality, the only reason the Wizards were in the game on Monday and the only reason they have a chance in the postseason to get the ninth seed at two games back from Orlando at the moment. Here's what I'll say about Bradley Beal. He was snubbed of not only being an all-star, but an all-star starter. If it were up to me, he would have started in the backcourt with Kemba Walker in the East. I didn't think Trey Young has been better this season than Beal. And Trey Young is leading the team, lining up to have the best odds in the draft lottery, while Beal is averaging 30 and leading his team to a potential playoff matchup against Milwaukee in the playoffs. And the second highest scorer on the Wizards is Berton at only 15. Beal is 34 of 60 shooting over this mini stretch, and the Wizards are currently playing the Nets as we speak and lead by eight at the beginning of the second quarter. The 76ers began life without Ben Simmons for at least the next two weeks on Monday, with Joel Embiid having a career night, torching the Hawks for 49 points, 19 of those in the fourth quarter. So we've seen the Sixers a little bit without Embiid and Simmons leading the Sixers, and now we get to see Embiid lead this team, which I feel could be really good for the Sixers. I understand that Simmons played six-ish minutes on the Saturday night game against the Bucks, and then he was out for the rest of the game, and Embiid led the Sixers to a big loss on the road. 
But when Embiid takes control of the game, he's the best center of the game, and he's likely the best player on the floor from either team. We've seen stretches where Embiid and Simmons have played apart and thrived for their team, but there have been times where they play together and they seem to struggle. The Sixers are about to embark on a four-game road trip to California next week where they will see all four teams in California. And we know the Sixers have struggled on the road this season. They haven't won 10 games on the road. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If the Sixers can find a way to win away from home, they are a legit championship contender because we know what the Sixers are like in Philly. I'm interested to see where this team goes from here on out and how they're fair without their main ball handler. It's time for a news flash before we head to my predictions for NBA games. Stephen Curry will officially return from injury on Sunday against the Wizards. Curry hasn't played since October 30th with a fractured hand, and it's safe to say he hasn't missed much. Five-time tennis grand slam winner Maria Sharapova retired from tennis today after a 19-year pro career. She had 645 match wins and 36 titles and will go down as one of the best players in her generation. The NFL scouting combine is this weekend in Indianapolis where the players that hope to be drafted in April will show their skills to NFL scouts. Presumpted number one overall pick Joe Burrow will not throw at the combine, but likely will at the LSU Pro Day. And projected number two overall is Chase Young, and he won't do any skills dr drills at the combine either, but again, he'll likely do it at the Ohio State Pro, Pro Day. Tua Tagovailoa is scheduled to be cleared by doctors to work out on March 9th and plans to participate in Alabama's Pro Day a month later. And lastly, Malik Monk of the Charlotte Hornets has been suspended indefinitely by the NBA for violating the league's anti-drug policy and will remain suspended until he's compliant with the NBA. The league announced the suspension today, but there is no details on Monk's violation. It's time for some NBA predictions for the next two weeks' worth of games. Then we start with the Rockets visiting the Celtics. I'll take the Celtics at home in this game. They've played well recently, as I said, with Jason Tatum doing what he does, and I like where they're at right now. Sunday at 3.30 is the Sixers visiting the Clippers. I mentioned that earlier in the show. I like the Clippers at home. I think that they are going to be the better team. And like I said, the, they, the Clippers have the best home record in the league, and the Sixers have an identical road record with the Knicks. I'll take the Clippers. Tuesday at 10 o'clock is the Sixers visiting the Lakers, and much of the same reasons apply here. I'll take the Lakers. Next Wednesday at 7, Pacers versus the Bucks. I'm going to take the Bucks at home. We all know what they're capable of. We know what they do with Giannis being the best player. Chris Middleton is playing extremely well recently. I like the Bucks. Wednesday, next Wednesday at 9.30 is the Pelicans against the Mavericks. First time that Zion and Luka will play. I'm going to take the Mavericks at home. They've struggled a little bit recently, and the Pelicans have played good, but I'm going to take the Mavericks at home. Thursday at 8 o'clock is the Clippers against the Rockets. I'm going to take the Rockets at home. That's a hesitant pit, but the Rockets have beaten the Clippers two out of three times so far this season. This is their final matchup. Next up is next Thursday at 10.30. The first NBA Finals rematch is the Raptors against the Warriors. I'm going to take the Raptors on the road. Stephen Curry's first national TV game since his injury, but I think the Raptors will prevail here even though the best player on the Warriors is back. Now, the most intriguing matchup, in my opinion, is next Friday at 10.30 is the Milwaukee Bucks against the Los Angeles Lakers. The Bucks put a weapon on the Lakers the first time, but I think the Lakers at home will succeed and take the win against the Milwaukee Bucks. Saturday, next, excuse me, next Saturday at 8.30 is the 76ers going to Golden State, the final of that four-game road trip I mentioned earlier. I'll take the Sixers on the road. I'm hesitant, but I will take the Sixers on the road. And next Sunday, probably the best matchup, next Sunday at 3.30 is the Lakers against the Clippers third of four matchups between the two L.A. Giants. And for the first time this season, I think the Lakers will win. Well, those are some giant games in the next two weeks, and I'll cover them all for you when we come back from our spring break. But that's all I've got for right now. We hope you, tune, we hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll tune in next time. On behalf of our great crew, I'm Brandon Thomas saying thank you for watching Anchor Management.